Hello, friends. Uh, it's Robert, and uh, I said I wanted to do more videos on here, um, both um, regular and like ASMR style videos. So, hi, <laughs> here I am. Um, I am just chilling. It's uh, currently Thursday night, about 10 o'clock, and uh, everybody's asleep. Boys are asleep, Joel's asleep, and uh, the dogs are asleep. So I'm just uh, relaxing. I got a few things done, and now I have a little bit of a good old scotch. This is the, the Balvini 12 year. And um, I just thought I would talk with you guys for a little bit. Um, it's been a pretty crazy month, to be honest. Uh, we did a vacation, which we've n never done <laughs> without the kids. We did a vacation without the kids to the Dominican Republic. It's the first time we've ever I've ever been off the country, um, out of the country, I should say. <laughs> um, and it was it was totally amazing. I wish it was still there. And then we came back and hit the ground running. And there's been multiple sicknesses with our kids and ourselves, and like just a lot of life that I don't need to talk about right now. So it's been a little crazy, a little bit stressful to be honest, but I'm holding up okay. You know, all things considered. Um, you know, the, the main reason I wanted to come and just kind of talk is just to be frank with you guys and, and share sort of where I'm at. So I, I have a lot of things going on, as you guys know. I mean, I'm sure you know this if you've been following my channel for a while. Um, I have my day job, which is I'm a neuropsychologist. So that consists of interviewing and testing people for issues like dementia or brain injuries, things that affect the way that your brain works. And my job is to help their doctors figure out what's going on and better treat them. That involves long sessions. You know, I had a four and a half hour session of testing uh, yesterday and um, report writing, gathering um, records, all that good stuff. I also do therapy. I have a handful of um, face to face and online therapy patients that I see for individuals and couples. So that's like my my day job. Right. And I do that about um, three days a week now on, on Mondays, I tend to do therapy sessions and feedback sessions for testing cases that I've done. And then on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I do testing, though recently I've we've had very, very, very low referrals with, at my work, just circumstantially like um, things sometimes go in waves, you know, and coming off the summer, there were very little people booking. And that's been kind of annoying because uh, I had this like interesting um, financial situation. Like I'm not complaining, um, but the circumstances are, I saw a massive decrease to like my monthly income, which is probably higher than it should have been, to be honest. Like, um, you know, I, I, I was making pretty good money, but um, both the drop in just referrals from doctors and places that we were getting clients from not due to um you know lack of good care or anything like that just weird circumstance so com combining that with a change that amazon made where um on audible the the platform that my books are on for audiobook um they used to have a program called the the well it's still called the bounty program but it used to be that if my book was the first book that somebody got when they join Audible, meaning like my book brought them onto the platform, I would get an extra $50 bonus from that. And I got a lot of those because a lot of people get on Audible because of my books. And I was, you know, making 3000 plus a month from just those bounties on top of what I was making from the audiobooks, the print books, the ebooks, etc. Um, which, you know, I, I can't complain about a change in that because that was essentially like free money, you know, but it was cool. And it was something that, um, I didn't necessarily come to rely on, but enjoyed quite a bit, obviously. Um, but that changed and now they changed it so that the bounty program is technically more it's $75, but you only get the bounty. If somebody goes through your particular link, like they go to your blog post or, you know, social post or whatever website, and they click through your link to get your book. Nobody does that. I mean, I've probably uh, less than 20 altogether since they started that program. Um, so as a result, my monthly income suddenly drops 3,000, 4,000 bucks, and then poof, another maybe thousand or something from, from, from changes at work. So things have been like, I'm like, whoa, okay. Like, Hey, 
you know, time to hustle. <laughs> so that's been interesting and uh, an adjustment. But it's kind of got me thinking just about like what I'm doing with myself. Um, as I said, you know, lots of things going on. So so the, the day job thing. And then um, I have my my kind of career as an author. So I have three and a half ish books, you know, so I have my hardcore self help books for fuck anxiety and depression. Um, by far anxiety is the most popular book that I've done. That's, that's been sort of like my livelihood. Um, and then I'm more recently, I published my dementia book. Does my mom have dementia? If you guys haven't seen that, I have a copy of it over here. Let's see. Ugh. That one. Um, so most recently I released that one, that one is, we're still figuring out how to, you know, get it to pick up steam and stuff like that. It's a, it's a new book and it's in a very, you know, sort of niche topic and, uh, been having a hard time with Amazon in terms of their advertising platform. Apparently that counts as a self-help book, which is now off limits for advertising for Amazon. Um, whatever. So I've started my career as an author. Currently, I'm working on my next book, which is going to be a, a book for teens with anxiety. Uh, the current working title is uh, an anxiety book for teens that doesn't suck. <laughs> and so it's going to be taking kind of the similar approach to my hardcore self-help books, but um, less swearing, um, less adult stuff, and more related to teens. Still taking things seriously and, and really trying to help, but making it something that's approachable to them. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, and then, of course, I have the podcast. Um, I'm working on an app that I can't talk a whole lot about. It's in the online therapy space, something that I think is, is going to be sorely needed and hopefully a little revolutionary. But uh, it's in the early stages. We're in sort of the uh, like validating stages before putting out a, a minimum viable product. Um, and, uh, yeah, I got my blog. I got obviously my family and stuff like that. So many, many, many things going on. Um, I'm totally rambling at this point, but I think what I've been sort of thinking about this week, and I, there's been a lot of things that have prompted this, you know, I'm not one to say that the, uh, the universe is trying to tell me a message because I don't believe that, but my attention is certainly biased toward noticing certain things, which are things like, uh, my friend, uh, Ali Matu, he's a, he's a psychologist who does, uh, the psych show, I think also the psych show. And he's been on, um, you know, HBO, Netflix shows, uh, Buzzfeed. He decided to stop practicing and go full time with like content creation. Um, and I've seen a few pe other people do make some big moves like this too recently. And I've been thinking, you know, my wife has wanted me to, she's like, you know, you could probably do a lot more if you just put both feet in instead of having one foot out, one fat foot in. Um, but right now I'm hedging, you know, I'm, I talked about all those things that I do and I do all those things. I'm a neuropsychologist, I'm a therapist, I'm an author, I'm a podcaster, you know, content creator, all this stuff. And there's a big part of me that's wondering if it would make sense for me to just right now stop practicing, at least for the most part, stop practicing clinically and focus on doing content creation and stuff like this full time. I mean, I have so many projects that I've done, you know, I, I haven't even mentioned like my online course and all this stuff. Um, and they, they certainly serve me well, but there's so much potential that's also not tapped into. Um, you know, for instance, like I can't just schedule, you know, back to, I can't schedule back to back to back, like, you know, six podcast interviews in a row because I got other stuff to do. Um, and you know, there's things like, uh, I, I don't have an agent for like my, my authorness and speaking and stuff like that. And there's a lot of areas where I think I could take what I've already done or what I'm currently working on and just really ramp it up. Uh, even this, you know, I, I, I um, haven't been putting a lot of attention into, into YouTube, but you guys are still here. You know, you guys are still here. I still have the attention of a lot of you. And it's a shame to sort of like waste that. And I don't know what form it's going to take in terms of continuing with, with YouTube, but I kind of just want to do what I want to do. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm hedging right now between being sort of like, you know, reduced. I'm not working full time as a, as, as like a practicing psychologist, but I'm also not doing this full time. And, and part of me thinks that maybe I should, um, try a experiment and, and maybe for a year or something, I don't know, there's nothing stopping me from, 
doing an experiment and I need to remember that. This is me giving myself therapy and you're just here to watch. <laughs> but there's nothing stopping me from, from doing an experiment. And like, you know, if I want to get back, if I want to stop doing clinical work, I can jump back into it anytime I want. My hesitation is that I'm an early career psychologist. You know, I, um, I've only been licensed for a couple of years. Um, I, I just recently, you know, gained the ability because I practice for a couple of years now to do like legal things like capacity assessments where I'm determining if somebody has capacity to like make decisions for themselves and stuff. And that's pretty cool. And, you know, I'm still obviously uh, learning. I went through my PhD program. I've done lots of stuff since then, more than more than most probably. But, you know, the fact still stands that I'm 31 and just turned 31. Um, so quite young still and um, still learning despite all this gray hair that you see all around here. So um, that's one hesitation, you know, and, and also I don't want to fall into the um, trap of being like, okay, well, you know, you got your degree, but you, you don't know what you're talking about because you haven't done it. You haven't been there and, you, you know, you don't have enough experience. Who are you to be t making this content and doing these other things? Um, which I don't think is a fully valid criticism, um, but I also want to make sure that I, I do know what I'm talking about and I do practice what I preach. So it is something that I'm, that I'm totally torn about. Um, but I also think I have to think about sort of like what makes me happy and what is fun and how to sort of leverage my life the best way. You know, one of the things that, so I backed off from work, you know, I used to work a lot more with the clinical work. I was doing uh, a lot more patients and, and um, seeing a lot more patients that is like people. <laughs> and I was seeing a lot more of them uh, like four days a week, five days a week, you know, and I backed off from that so that I can, that I can do more of both of these things. And also, you know, I have two boys, Remy and Leo, they're um, coming up on four and coming up on on two so they're both young they're both in school but they require you know a lot of, a lot of shuttling around and attention when they get back from school and stuff like that and so being home a lot has made it so that i can take them to school very often and um i, I can play more of a primary caregiver role and you know i i like that it's not everything to me but i, I do like it and between me and my wife you know um we have different things that we're, that we're good at. And I think that, um, the, I do have some strengths that lend to being more of like a, I don't want to say a stay at home parent, but like a more present, um, you know, hands on parent with like the day to day BS. Right. And so there's part of me that's like, Hey, maybe that's, that's something that's really important to consider too. Like you could be, you know, um, rather than, hedging between all these different things maybe there's just a couple maybe you're full-time with this content creation authoring you know doing the stuff that's within this sort of sphere and spending a lot more time being just like dad you know so it, I don't know it's something that I'm thinking about it's something that I couldn't I I don't think that I could just pull the plug and, and go and do it right now I don't think that I could just stop working um for my like real job at this moment, even though I make, I'm just going to say it, I make less from my real job than I do from being an author and, and content creator. And that's been the case for a while now, you know, which is why, you know, my wife's like, there's this potential here, you know, like things could be, um, elevated even further if you just sort of like really, really get deep into it. And I, I, I kind of believe that too. Um, at this point in time, like, financially like I couldn't just like stop working right now um, simply because it'd be like okay well next month we're gonna be kind of fucked <laughs> so like we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens with that I think this is something that I would have to sort of save toward um, and make that happen and have some good stuff coming up that I can you know reliably you know um, reliably rely on I guess <laughs> the nature of the, of these things is, is just really interesting. You know, I mean, relying on these, these platforms online is, is interesting. And I, I do think that I'm good at pivoting and, and figuring out something that will work. But one of the hesitations to just jumping full time into online content creation is like what I talked about with Amazon, with the, with the, um, um, the audible bounty change. That was a huge dent to, to my income. Uh, we've seen like the whole YouTube adpocalypse thing change things for a lot of people. 
um, big changes over at Twitch that are making a lot of people move over to, to Mixer. Um, so these platforms are, are fickle, you know, and, and things change really quickly and, and they can have massive effects if you, if you really just drop uh, all of your eggs in that basket, which I don't, you know, I have a lot of different streams of income and interests and things like that, but that's just something that I got to consider too. So, um, you know, I, I, right now I think the stage that I'm at is like, I kind of want to see if there's a way to make that work. I kind of want to see if there's a way for me to stop or at least take a break from from the clinical stuff because it um, there's a lot of sunken time into it too. You know, there's there's the direct clinical work that you get paid for um, in report writing and stuff like that's accounted there, but there's also like making phone calls, like making connections so you can get referrals, um, like researching things that, that you don't know yet. And there's just like, a lot of time that just sort of gets eaten up in between all these other things and stress too, when that pops up. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't, I can't see myself not practicing anymore, like for life, I don't think, but maybe taking a break from it and, and trying to establish some things and, and um, see where this goes, you know, cause I mean, I, it's also, I have to realize in my life, um, I have a bit of a time limited opportunity, you know, like I can't be the guy that, that writes the hardcore self-help books when I'm 80, right? When I'm, when I'm 60, 70, 80, probably at least, um, right now as sort of this young early career psychologist with the personality and experiences and stuff that I have now, I think there's a unique opportunity and maybe this is something I need to capitalize on now and, um, you know, see, see how it goes. So that's where I'm, that's where my head's at right now. Um, so what I'm kind of thinking of doing is I'm just sort of trying to wrap my brain around like, okay, if I were to do that, like, so if I were to just jump ship and focus on being a content creator, I'm just going to use that term for this. What, what things would be different? How would things be different? What things would change? How would my weeks look different? How would my setup look different? Things like that. So I'm going to try to integrate some of those simple things and see and, and see how it goes. Like, so for instance, um, this is a different setup for videos. I'm using my webcam. I'm using my podcasting mic rather than using my, you know, um, not DSLR, but like my mirrorless camera with, you know, a road mic on top or a clip on mic, um, not doing, you know, a lot of heavy editing and stuff like that to see maybe this is something that I could easily do and I could crank out more videos occasionally doing a higher quality video or something like that, but, um, at least having this contact with you guys. And I think that's what you care about more than anything. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the way that I feel about a lot of content creators. And so I did something simple, which was I put, um, I have like these, these, these lamps that I've been using forever for lighting. I'm sure you can tell the lighting here is not like perfect, you know, it's a little harsh. Maybe, um, I have much better lighting than I did in my last video, which was totally dark. Um, but these are just like cl clamp lights, you know, like you would have at a hardware store with um, wax paper over them to, to, to chill it out a little bit. I've had these for years. I actually made them on the channel, um, did an ASMR video when I was living in San Diego showing how I, how I made the lights. But I just put one on the right side of my desk and one up on like attached to the window on the left side here to get, you know, kind of two light sources. And I'm just going to leave them there so that like I can turn them on, turn it on, turn on the webcam and go. And this is, you know, like I said, this is 10 o'clock at night, 1030 at night now. So I can not have to rely on having the sun, you know, there during the day. I could do this when people are, when everybody in the house is asleep, stuff like that. So that's like one small change. And if this would work, then, you know, what I would do is swap these out for like good video lights and just put boom, boom, one on each side and make it a setup so I can just go. Um, and, and, you know, other things, I'm just trying to look out for ways that it might be different and see how it feels, kind of do a little bit of a trial run before doing a real trial run. One thing that I've been doing, um, because I have so much that I'm trying to fit into my life, it, the way, one way that I'm pr uh, trying out right now to sort of just wrap my head around it all is blocking out different days of the week for different things. So like I, I, I have this little you know, legal pad. And I wrote down things I want to fit in, you know, so I have my dementia book brand and website that are all related to that, that book that I showed you. I have the next book that I'm writing. I have 
social content that I need to be writing. Sometimes I could really fall off the bandwagon with that and not write any new like social social media content, whether it's inspirational or funny or interesting. Sometimes I'm just like, ugh, I'm just going to retweet stuff. Like I don't need to make anything original. Um, my own like Duff the Psych brand and blog and website stuff. And then like learning and reading. So I have it, I have it blocked out. So like Mondays right now are dementia day. So I, I'm going to write blog posts, you know, consider things that I can do with the brand, the website, you know, make connections, stuff like that for, for dementia content. Tuesday is going to be all podcast stuff, podcast prep, and then also writing social content. Um, and I'm going to try to batch it, you know, do a bunch in one day. Wednesday is my, my, uh, learning day. So, you know, I, I've, long been wanting to get more into just like just learning more you know I, I do so much output I need to do more input so reading listening to audiobooks you know getting around to some of those articles that I've had saved forever and just trying to make sure that I'm that I'm still taking in good information as well as giving it out um, and then Thursdays are like my business development brand blog things for Duff the Psych mainly and then Friday is more content like videos and live streams and things of that sort. And that's how it's looking right now. You know, I'm giving it a trial run and seeing how that goes. And if I don't have anything for any one of those days, I'll just substitute something else out. Um, and I've kind of been thinking about if I were to do this potential thing that I'm thinking of doing, which is, you know, quitting, you know, my day job, so to speak, maybe it would make sense to do the same thing with the boys, you know, block out different days of the week for different focuses, maybe one day is more books and library and sort of academic stuff. One day is more artistic, you know, painting, using clay, Play-Doh, stuff like that. Maybe one day is adventure stuff so we can go out and find something to do. Maybe one day is working in the garage with me and doing projects, whatever. Um, you got to just find something that works for you and then try to wrap your brain around what you have in front of you and what you have to do. So this is my attempt at that. And I don't have any, any answers or solutions right now. I kind of just wanted to, to vent and, and let you guys in on where my thoughts are, you know, how I'm conceptualizing where I'm at right now and, and what to do with myself. So we'll see where things go. I think that I would definitely, at the very least, you know, like to do more video, um, especially on this channel on YouTube. And at this point, I don't feel comfortable saying like what I will be doing. Um, it certainly is harder for me, at least right now, the way that things are set up, you know, not being able to just devote all my attention to this. It's harder for me to do like higher production videos, such as like my react videos and things that require a lot of like, um, careful, uh, arrangement and editing and stuff like that. Um, but I do want to do more just, you know, talking to you videos and, um, also, you know, yeah, maybe some more ASMR videos. And I don't want to necessarily say how much of either I'm going to do. I kind of just want to do what I want to do when it is something that I want to do it and see how that goes. Try to, I'm really, really, really trying to find a path of, of least, least resistance, you know? And for those of you who might be looking at me saying like, um, I get comments every time I post something that like, Robert, you look tired. You need to rest more. You need to stop running yourself through the ringer, blah, 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 blah. I'm not. I'm fine. Um, I, I, for my entire life, I've had bags under my eyes. Well, my entire, you know, teen to adult life, I always look like I haven't slept, but, um, I sleep fine right now. You know, I get enough sleep. I, um, you know, I get, I get enough sleep and I don't have troubles falling asleep anymore. I've, I've really solved that problem. And, you know, I've been, except for the past, you know, week or so, a couple of weeks, I've, I exercise regularly, you know, I eat decent. I'm not, um, not, not taking care of myself. I'm not overly stressed. You know, obviously I have a certain degree of a stress level when you have all the things I have going on along with small children, along with a puppy who is freaking berserk. Um, so, you know, yeah, I got a lot going on, but like, I'm fine. So don't, don't feel the need to let me know that I look tired and that I'm not taking good care of myself because I am. And this is part of it, you know, trying to figure out, um, I'm planning for success, right? Like, so if this scales up, is what I'm doing right now sustainable? And the answer to that is no. So I have to plan for that. And that's where I'm at. So thank you guys for listening. If you've sat through this, uh, what 25 minute ramble, holy shit, you're awesome. 
Um, I don't know what the point of this is other than to share with you. But if you do have any thoughts for me, uh, encouragement, ideas, questions, um, words of warning, um, anything, you know, if you, if you guys have anything you want to, you want to share or contribute, shoot me some comments and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, if there's anything that I've mentioned that sounds really exciting to you that you would like love for me to do, um, let me know that too. And if you feel like this video format is cool and you'd like me to do more easy, simple videos like this where I'm just talking to you guys, you know, webcam to, uh, you know, I don't know what they, webcam to the webcam is not right, but you know, just like this is what I'm trying to say. Just webcam mic to your screen. Um, let me know. And I hope you guys are taking good care of yourselves. I'll be back again soon.